I'm Senator Clarence Lamb and welcome to my video update covering week four of the 2019 legislative session. One of the main responsibilities that we have as legislators is the passage of the state's budget, which according to the state constitution, we are required to do so by the end of session. The budget process begins with the governor's proposed budget, which he delivered to the legislature a few days ago. An assessment of his budget proposal is mixed, while it includes important items like a 3% pay raise for state employees and more funding for behavioral health providers, it fell short in reserving funds for recommendations expected to be issued by the Kerwin Commission to improve our public schools, and does not include funding to prevent the shift of prescription drug costs to state government retirees. Most concerning is that the proposed budget will leave the state with $62 million in structural deficit this year that will balloon to over $1 billion by 2022. Earlier this week, Governor Hogan gave his annual State of the State address, and in it, he struck a bipartisan tone of wanting to work with the legislature, but provided few specifics. However, he did propose a series of tax cuts that would cost the state more than $500 million over five years, which left many legislators wondering if this is something the state can afford, given the structural deficit that's expected to exceed $1.5 billion during the same period. The Democratic Caucus also unveiled their legislative priorities this week, which included efforts to curb the cost of prescription drugs, protect the ban on pre-existing conditions, raise the age to purchase tobacco to 21, expand the child care tax credit, and raise the minimum wage to $15 per hour. This week, the bills that generated the most discussion in the Education, Health, and Environmental Affairs Committee, on which I serve, were ones that gave greater flexibility to the county boards of education in setting their school year calendars. In a nod to Ocean City businesses, the governor signed an executive order several years ago that required local school systems to start school after Labor Day, which combined with requirements to complete the school year by June 15th, left local school boards with few options but to cut short spring break, eliminate existing holidays, and reduce the cushion for snow days. One key bill introduced this week would restore local control over school calendars by permitting school boards to start school before Labor Day if they chose to do so. Testifying in strong support were representatives of local school boards, superintendents, and educators. In opposition were mostly Eastern Shore businesses. As we consider this important legislation, I'd like to hear from you. What do you think about providing school boards local control over setting their own school calendars? Leave your comments below and we'll keep you updated on the status of this bill. With the legislative session finally hitting full stride, we'll have more bills to cover next week's update. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful week.